All right. I want to look at two more of these things. Um, and I'm not going to work them out very much. I just want to help get you on the right road as you're setting them up. So hopefully you can avoid um, <laughs> hitting any uh, major problems out of the gate. Um, so when we look at this, we've got one, two, three, four vectors. There's the 300 pounds, which is straight down. There's vector C. And um, we can see clearly where the vector C is. It's kind of like above, um, what would that be? Above quadrant two. Wouldn't this be quadrant two back there in the X and Y plane? Um, so C is above that. So that's pretty easy to take care of. And um, we can use cosines and sines of our 60 and our 30 degree angle. But the thing I wanted to point you out, point out to you is, is D. All right, the connection D, because the picture on this, it kind of looks like D should be over quadrant four, that it should be over that little area right there, but it's not, okay? It is not, and we know that because this number right here is the direction cosine for D. All right, so this vector they give us with direction cosines. And so when you work out your direction for D, you're going to have here cosine 120, and then um, we're going to say minus cosine 60, and then cosine 45. Okay, and so since it's 160, um, then that tells us that actually the vector is actually over this space back there. It's actually over quadrant three, okay? And um, so it's difficult to see that without, um, uh, they haven't drawn any actual shadows or given any clues about where that thing might be. So anyway, watch out for that, okay? And then let's look at one more to make sure you get started on a good road. And that's this one in the last, the last um, foundational fundamental problem, the last fundamental problem. Okay. So we've got a crate. And so we know that this cable right here is going to have that 150 pounds. All right. What we've got to do is we've got to find the others. Okay. And so let me sort of show you how I would get started on this because you're going to have to use position vectors to get your unit vectors. All right. And so let's just focus on this cable here first. All right. Let's focus on that guy. And so we're going to need, we know we're going to need the unit vector for B. The way we have to get that is we've got to work through our, our position vector. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my position vector up here. So in terms of X, if I go from A to B, I'm going backwards six in X. In terms of Y, I have to scoot over a distance of three. So along the positive direction. And in terms of Z, I'm going to end up going up two. So there's my position vector. And then I'm going to have to, the word, the word is normalize. I'm going to have to normalize it. So I divide it by its magnitude. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay. Um, and, and that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to get at that. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you'll, you'll have to do this, something similar with C. Uh, D is pretty easy getting a direction vector for D because it's just along the x-axis. How hard is that? Okay. All right. Well, um, the rest of these are all, are all pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, again, take your time. Lots of room for silly mistakes. So um, you, you got this. Just take your time. Um, anyway. <laughs>